Scientists throughout the 1900s dreamed of a day that machines would be able to rule the world. Various elements of pop culture have visualized a future to be filled with automatons and robots, created to make human life way easier than it's supposed to be. With our topic today, you will see one such system that might make the scientists of the 1900s squeal with joy with how it is dominating and reinventing the world at last, the financial world. This is Fraud Explained. To enjoy more videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the notification bell or else I'll be looking into you too. If you're keen on investing, chances are you know all about the New York Stock Exchange. It's the largest and most liquid securities market in the world. Thousands of companies across the globe trade their stocks amongst millions of investors worldwide, both big and small. Individuals, financial institutions, and even whole countries trade their stocks using the New York Stock Exchange. When trading stocks, traders use all sorts of methods in order to secure their trade and get the best deals possible. Day trading, position trading, swing trading, scalping. There are just so many of them. Companies all over the globe utilize these methods in order to create and end transactions and look out for the best deals on the market. That's how the stock exchange works. However, with the advent of technology came the rise of HFTs. The most controversial amongst all these methods are HFTs, or High Frequency Trading Algorithms. Within milliseconds, these machines are able to trade hundreds of thousands of times, making small profits that accumulate over time. What exactly are High Frequency Trading Algorithms? Keep watching to find out. High Frequency Trading falls under Algorithmic Trading. Algorithmic trading is when computers and algorithms are used to trade stocks. Programs are able to analyze all possible markets and pinpoint which trades are the most attractive. The clincher? They can do all this and more without needing any form of human interaction. Over 80% of the trades nowadays are allegedly done by computers. Roughly 50% of these trades are done using high frequency trading. Today, high frequency trading is responsible for more than 50% of all trades. During the last two decades, high frequency trading has become a dominant factor for the way financial markets operate. There's no arguing that high frequency trading algorithms are effective, but what are its consequences over time? Some experts suggest that by relying purely on these machines to conduct trades, we have effectively handed over the reins of the most important markets to robots that are simply trying to outdo each other. Now, trading stocks with lightning speed doesn't seem as bad as you would think at first glance, but because it has been such a prominent method over the last few years, the Securities Exchange Commission has said that it has been effective at the cost of the market participants. So which traders typically use high-frequency trade systems? Well, investment banks, hedge funds, and institutional investors, to name some. Some of the most prominent high-frequency trading firms include Tower Research, Citadel LLC, and Virtue Financial. These high-frequency trading algorithms are able to identify attractive prices quickly and execute trades. This happens before other investors even realize that such opportunities are present, because these traders open and close deals within microseconds. In the blink of an eye, hundreds and thousands of trades have already happened. It's like something out of a science fiction movie. These computers do thousands of computations all at once, without any human supervision. They are able to turn profits and close deals before anyone can even realize what's going on. These programs are able to analyze and evaluate different markets, and high-frequency trading programs are able to do all this at an alarming speed. They have no days off, and they don't even have to sleep, which means they can just keep trading and trading until they are programmed to stop. Sounds pretty cool, right? Well, there's a few downsides. So even though high-frequency trading seems like a pretty awesome way to go about your trades, what are its negative aspects? Well, first off, high-frequency trading is unstable. HFT strategies utilize algorithms that are amazingly complex, that those who use them don't always totally understand what is happening. 
Once an unstable algorithm enters a market and comes into contact with other unstable algorithms, they can enter dangerous feedback loops and cause drastic changes in the stock market. An example of this is when the Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped by a thousand points in 20 minutes on May 6, 2010, and normalized right after, just like nothing had happened. This event is known as a flash crash. Investopedia describes flash crashes as what happens when trading is exacerbated as computer trading programs react to aberrations in the market, such as heavily selling in one or many securities, and automatically begin selling large volumes at an incredibly rapid pace to avoid losses. The strategy is simple. Trade as much as you can and do it in the fastest way possible. The profit margin to each trade is usually very minimal, but these small amounts add up and altogether they're able to rack in millions or even billions. The computers compete with one another in terms of speed. They all have to be a split second faster than all the others in order to attain the best deals. That's only possible when they are close to the stock market. If they have a shorter cable, they're able to transmit the information faster. Seconds turn into milliseconds, and you can miss out on the best trade deals by just breathing. Nowadays, high-frequency trading is so embodied in the market structure that it almost becomes impossible to think about how the financial system will function without any of the high-speed traders working in the trading system. High-frequency trading increases liquidity, because markets are assessed on liquidity by how many trades can be made. There has to be a corresponding trading partner for every offer. High-frequency trades are most efficient and work their best in markets that are already very liquid. They also are not obliged to pull away from high-risk trades during times of crisis, when other trading partners would do so. They are also known to reduce price volatility. However, some experts disagree, as some high-frequency trading mechanisms can destabilize the market. The average trader also does not have the capacity to match with high-frequency traders. They're just too fast. Not everyone can afford to find a place that is very close to the market, and sometimes the specially programmed high-frequency trading algorithms tend to be too expensive. Those who are closer to the stock market are able to benefit more from high-frequency trading algorithms and they have an edge in obtaining the information that they need. Classic dealers lose out to high-frequency trading algorithms because of this. Another disadvantage of high-frequency trading is the lack of regulation that occurs when trades are being made. High-frequency traders are sometimes able to manipulate the market and deceive other participants in the market. Sometimes trying to make sure that you're always one step ahead of the competition can become difficult and costly. It would be much easier to slow down all of the other market participants. An example of these kinds of methods is stuffing. Stuffing overloads a system with thousands of small, unimportant offers which confuses some systems and takes time to sift through. These systems produce a flood of information so the trading system have to try to filter through all the available information to find out which deals actually work. By the time that they are able to do so, all the valuable offers have already been taken and they're left on the lookout for the next available ones. Another manipulation technique is known as spoofing. This is when a trading program would generate quite a few offers that are grossly overpriced. Because high-frequency traders could cancel these offers before anyone else can purchase them, they create the illusion that there are many who would like to buy these offers. The prices of these goods will rise significantly and will cause other traders to react. The spoofers can then buy the offers at their unmanipulated prices and earn the profit from the supposed rise in price. Some experts have been able to analyze and evaluate the supposed pros of high-frequency trading. To summarize, these trading systems are said to provide more liquidity to the market, narrow the gap in bid-ask spreads, analyze the instabilities of the market and discover ways to go around them, manipulate the real supply and demand of certain industries and twist them to their industry's advantage, and incur hidden trading costs when used as mechanisms. Of course, this also depends on the perspective you're looking at it from. As a result, because of all the high-frequency trading's aforementioned abilities, they can prey on smaller and slower traders and monopolize profit. This could make the market more volatile and could even cause it to crash. Today, companies all over the world are trying to figure out how to get in on high-frequency trading and implement it in their own exchanges. 
it has become such a prominent feature in the marketplace that some are left with no choice but to follow suit. Now that you've learned about high frequency trading and both its benefits and disadvantages, what are your thoughts on it? Would you also pursue high frequency trading if you had the option to do so? Would you want in on this market superpower? Share your thoughts and comments down below and I'll be responding to all comments in the first hour. If you were intrigued with how high frequency trading works and its implications on the market, why not head over to this other video on American's $22 trillion debt to see how America was able to rack up that much debt, which companies benefit from America's debt, and what would happen if the United States decided to default on their debt. It will blow your mind. Stay tuned and stay educated.